Part 6. Morning. No speaking? Okay, Natasha, can you listen to the reflection, please? I aspire to maintain an inquiry mind, a calm disposition, and an attentive ear, so that in this class and all classes, I can fill my true potential. Okay, sit down in silence, please. The school was designed by the famous and expensive architect Sir Richard Rogers. It cost more than £25 million. It's got more money than many other state schools and one of the best head teachers in the country. Sir Michael Wilshaw. I have to say, when you approach it as I did, from the direction I did, you think, God, it looks like a kind of Ikea furniture yeah. warehouse. It's like horrible. <laughs> the blue and the yellow. The blue yeah, and the yellow. Yeah, 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 but yeah, it's... Yeah. Uh, yeah, but but once is. you're in it, it's uh, yeah. it's quite different, isn't it? Yeah, it is. But where are all the children? Oh, there we are. There, there we are. There there. Yes, exactly. There in there. Mm. Can I come up? Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Do you like the school? Yes. Would you be afraid to say so if you didn't? No, <laughs> no they wouldn't. They wouldn't. They'd tell us. Today is Holocaust Memorial Day. This school is not typical. So then the question that follows from that is why not? Well, we've got typical children here. We've got children across the ability spectrum and across the social spectrum. We've got inner city children here. What we're saying to the youngsters who come here is that we don't really care very much about your background, but we expect you to achieve. Now, you know what results we achieved here last year. Fantastic results, one of the top schools in the country, the top school in London. We would never, ever have achieved those results if we hadn't put on those Saturday morning programmes. It's because Sir Michael has a bigger budget that he can extend the school day. Many children come at 7 in the morning and go home at 6 in the evening, as well as those Saturday sessions. Yes, so uh, he's getting into that. That's what I like. And discipline is very strict. Why, why were you just telling that... Young chap, what was he doing like? Right? His tie wasn't done up properly, so I was just showing him how to tighten it up and make sure the knot's right at the top. He looks presentable and smart. What about this chap here with his tie? How's, how's this tie here? That's it's just about it. We could do with the game with doing a little bit tighter. So that's, that's brilliant, thank you. So this is the oh. GCSE here, uh, just coming into assembly, so that's the area we're going to now. Right. And they're being quite literally inspected. A bit too regimented? I wouldn't say so. Structure liberates these children. You know, if they come from unstructured backgrounds, structure actually liberates them, gives them freedom to be able to express themselves and do well and be creative. Otherwise, they get trapped in the chaos of what goes on around. They see enough of that at home. People from other schools, they don't seem to understand. They think, how do you put up with such you know, with such strict rules, and we just think, well, that's that's how it should be, that should be the norm. You know, we're not expected to fail, we're expected to exceed, you know, just be successful people. It doesn't matter where you come from, that's what the school focuses on. Do you think generally there's a sense amongst your friends who aren't in the school that you've had a bit of an advantage by coming here? Yeah, I, I think so, because we've had the opportunity to take part in sports such as rowing which traditionally are sort of elitist sports for private schools and that's what for me I've taken up rowing and that's as a result of coming to Mossbourne I mean there's lots of drama activities you can get involved in debating societies and I think those are sort of things that enrich your life and make you whole as a person I guess. So you feel kind of privileged? Definitely. Are you a social engineer? Do you think it's your job? to narrow the gap between those who uh, started out with nothing and those who started out with quite a lot. Quite definitely. Without education, a lot of our youngsters will be stuck where they are. My job and the job of, of people like me is to ensure we get children from poor backgrounds and do well by them so that they can achieve well and get out of the poverty trap and close the gap that you're, you're, you're talking about. Why can't other schools replicate what we're doing? Because they haven't got your money. It's nothing to do with money. All it's right, a lot to do with money. Look at this building. Well, the building helps, but it's only one part of the equation. The most important issues are behaviour,
quality of teaching, the study support systems that we've got, communication with parents and so on. So uh, there's no reason why the systems that we've got here shouldn't be replicated elsewhere in buildings which aren't as nice as this. And in fact I did it in my previous school. And the students are in no doubt as to what is expected of them. From year seven he said that most one's aim was to get 80 percent and above achieving grade C to A star and each year he said it and it came like it almost became like just printed in your mind that you had to achieve it was a good thing we knew that we were going to achieve something that maybe friends <laughs> that were in other schools were couldn't achieve some friends told me that a lot of teachers as soon as they finished they just went to go straight home and leave school but with most one it was different because the teachers are always around after school and before school and are always willing to help you. Academies might be part of the answer when it comes to the attainment gap if enough heads are willing and able to follow the Mossbourne example. But this is the age of austerity and even if they want to become academies there's no money or a massive building programme available, quite the opposite. Not that you have to have new buildings, or indeed have to become an academy. This is what might once have been called a bonk standard comprehensive. It's graduation day at Phoenix High School in White City, a school transformed, hence the name. The first time I came here years ago, it was being threatened with closure. Now it tops the league tables in one important measure. When you factor in the social and economic backgrounds of the children on its roll, this is the school out of all England that is said to add the greatest value. The head teacher, Sir William Atkinson. Now, you, you, you need a smile. Come here. <laughs> Ready? His biggest fan is the woman who chairs the governors and remembers what it was like here before he arrived 12 years ago. It was awful. It was, there were broken windows, the children were completely undis undisciplined. Um, I remember there was a, a story about an ex-head girl who came back to speak to the children uh, two or three years ago, saying how her lasting memory of the school was riding round and round in a car belonging to one of the teachers that she'd hot-wired and being cheered on by everybody hanging out of the windows. And there was absolutely no discipline at all. The school was, it was written off by the local authority. So the single thing that changed it was what? The Bringing him in? That changed it, William's, William's enthusiasm, his determination, and him passing that on to the teachers. And also, he raised their expectations. Every child that comes into this school is asked which university they would like to set their sights on. Most of them haven't even thought about it, because William says, you will do that if you set your mind to it. You do have to wonder whether there are many other jobs out there tougher than turning around a badly failing school. Have you ever got to the point, even briefly, where you thought, I can't take this much longer. Uh, never, 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 never. Which is not to say, John, I've not had some really dark moments when things have not gone the way they would have gone. When I've had somewhere in the region of a third of the staff as supply teachers in the school. And there was a time in 1998, 1990, where I had to send home 15 supply teachers uh, because they just were not good enough. And I had to warehouse the children in a dining room and myself and senior staff would look after them during the course of the day because we couldn't afford to let them go home and I couldn't afford to allow the inadequate teachers we had, uh, temporary teachers we had at that time, uh, exposure to the young people because those were not the signals we wanted to give to this population here. We Part 6 questions. How does the Mossbourne Academy in Hackney start its day? The Academy has a big budget. What else does it do to boost educational achievement? Are you a social engineer? The head at Mossbourne is asked. What does he mean by this? And what arguably is behind the success of the Phoenix School in White City?